Hey guys, is this hat me or what? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Today, it's either wear this or don't be outside because it is scorching out here. You know, there are people who pay money to go sit in a small wooden room and pour, pour water on hot rocks just to feel the way I can feel simply by stepping outside. So, yeah, it's a miserable hot summer day here in the mid-Atlantic. It's been raining a bunch for the last month and now the sun has come out in all its blazing glory and you know what that means. Tons of humidity and I think I just saw a large mosquito flying off with a small dog in its claws. So yeah, it's like that. But I have every reason to brave the elements and suck it up and get out here today and show you this beautiful handgun. This is a Beretta. It's a very special one. This one comes from Langdon Tactical and this is the Elite LTT brand new. This is literally one of the first ones out the door um, judging by the serial number and on top of all that super thanks to the person who loaned me this gun so that I can test it out and share it with you. He's a viewer and he's a Patreon. He loaned me this brand new beautiful Elite LTT. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to avail myself of this opportunity. Let's check it out. Pistol comes with three 15 round magazines. I have all three of them loaded up with 15 rounds. They loaded pretty easy. The spring is pretty good, and uh, that last round was a little bit snug. You could feel it, but easy to get in there. This will be my very first shots through this gun. I don't know if the owner put any through it yet or not. It kind of didn't look like it, but either way, my very first shots, and I'm going to take the very first shot double action. Of course, it's got that Langdon trigger job. That is an option, but I wouldn't consider it an option. If I'm going to buy a handgun from Langdon Tactical, it's going to have the trigger job. Otherwise, why bother? Otherwise, you're just paying for aesthetics, which are nice, by the way, and we'll look at those in a bit. Man, it's a nice shooter. Excellent trigger job. It also has on it what are probably my favorite handgun sights. They are the Ameriglows. And they are, well, it doesn't specify, it's sort of a pseudo hackathorn design. It's got that front sight that's got that nice orange circle around the tritium vial in the center. The rear sights are mostly blacked out, but they have two tritium vials in them as well. So you would have a three dot sight picture in the dark. That target you see downrange is 10 yards away from me, about 10 or 11, and it is made by and supplied by Tactical AR-500 targets. It is made out of AR-550, and it is a miniature. Wow, what a nice shoot. Wow. I'll talk exact MSRP in a bit. I don't want to don't want to misquote it without the number in front of me, but uh, this is really not that terribly expensive a gun if you're looking for something with some customization and an extremely nice trigger. Let's start again double action. It's got a very smooth and sweet double action pull. Very nice. The Beretta 92 Elite LTT from Langdon Tactical. Here's a much better and quieter and certainly cooler look at it on the workbench. 
And before I go too far, I want to make sure I say a huge thank you to patron Matthew, who not only supports the channel by watching and by subscribing and by being a patron, which is as awesome as it gets, but he took awesomeness to a whole nother level when he loaned me this beautiful new pistol so that I could share it with you. So thank you, Matthew, and uh, just a few thousand more rounds and I'll have it right back to you. Okay, I promised I'd talk about the specs when I was somewhere cooler and quieter. Here are some of the key numbers about this gun. It is made from a Vertec M9A3 slide sitting on top of an M9A1 frame. And for Beretta 92 lovers, that's just about the favorite combination. Again, it was built at Langdon Tactical, that is Ernest Langdon's gunsmithing, and most notably the trigger work. And that's really what it all comes down to for this gun. They did add front cocking serrations, and as I mentioned on the range, this is a G model, so it's a decock only. Talked about the sights. I don't know what type they are. I know they are Ameriglo, and they are extremely nice, and they're very similar to that Hackathorn design. The barrel was a 4.7 inch stainless steel. It is match grade with a target crown. It has a solid steel guide rod, which is very heavy and definitely makes a difference in adding some nice balance to the gun. One of the things you notice right away in profile of this pistol is that trigger guard. That is an exclusive radius cut. It's got that flat squared off front. For people who, as I like to say, like to shoot wrong. So before my hands get too sweaty and yucky, let me try a little bit on paper here. This trigger is so nice. Very nice. Help, help, I'm down here. All right, so my hands are all ready. Getting a little slippery, especially support hand. I have a really hard time right here. <laughs> but we will press on. This trigger is very, very nice. So the obvious question will be, how does this compare to the Wilson Combat version? Or versions? There are two of those. Well, maybe we'll talk about that. But I'll tell you what, this thing is uh, very nice. The grip of my shooting hand is just not wavering at all with this G10 and this checkering. 
my support hand is sliding all over the place, but I guess I could put on gloves. Help keep my hands warm. I'm shooting Magtech ammo, by the way. This is the uh, the stuff you'll see on sale in bulk from you know lots of online sellers. Nothing special. It is 115 grain. And it's getting the job done. Sweet. All right, well, that was 45 rounds, all at the same spot on the target. Looks like we ate a pretty good size hole in the bottom half of that orange dot. The trigger on the gun is stainless steel, and there is very nice checkering on the front and back straps. Skeletonized hammer, of course, that's pretty standard in the business nowadays and it has very thin VZ grips on it. They are specific to the LTT. They've got the logo cut into them and they're G10 of course and again they are very thin. I'll talk about how thin they are compared to others in a moment. There is some bevel to the magazine well. It makes for decent loading. Also separating it from the pack is the fact that there's no lanyard loop on the bottom of the mainspring cap. And it does have an oversized and very nice, very functional magazine release button. And if you opt for the LTT with the trigger job, which in my opinion is the only way worth getting it, uh, it comes with a 13 pound chrome silicon hammer spring, which is nice and smooth and it does feel wonderful to shoot. All right, so what is the MSRP of this gun? as it sits, as you see it right here in front of you with the trigger job, $1,164. There are some other guns in that price range that are not nearly this quality. Okay, so a couple of points for discussion that um, are either questions I've been asked in the past or thoughts that came to me all by my lonesome. One of them is people are questioning whether the stainless steel barrel, uh, the unfinished, uncoated stainless steel barrel can cause glare uh, enough to be distracting to the shooter. Um, my answer to that is not really. The day that I took this to the range was just about the brightest day we've had this summer. It was ridiculous. That's why I wore that very attractive hat. And I did not notice any glare. Now I was wearing polarized sunglasses as well, which very well could have helped, but I didn't really notice any glare off the barrel. I did notice it on camera though. The camera picked up quite a bit of glare off the barrel. So the answer to that question is the shooter is probably not going to be bothered by it, but the spectators might be. And I can't say enough or I can't emphasize enough just how smooth this trigger is in both double action and in single action. I did measure the trigger pull just with my Lyman digital gauge and double action came out to around seven and a half pounds and I tried it multiple times. Single action came out to about four and a half pounds, again after multiple times measuring it. So seven and a half for the double action and four and a half for the single action. It's a very, very nice trigger.
Whenever I can, I also like to shoot a magazine full of my carry ammo through pretty much any gun that could even remotely be carried. And there, I promise you, pe there are people that will carry this. This is the Sig Sauer Elite Performance V Crown, and this is the 124 grain. This is my preferred and current carry ammo. I don't mean current, like these are the rounds I have to do without on the way home, but you know what I mean. I'm going to start out double action again, because it is a double action, single action gun. I keep forgetting to do that. Okay, I'm going to go for a clean spot on the target up at the head. 15 rounds. That was double action, folks. What a nice gun to shoot. Some guns are a chore. And some guns are just a joy. This one is a joy. On a nice mild day without sweaty hands. I could probably make some really nice groups with this thing. This is the A3 slide, by the way. And it is a G model, meaning the decocker is a decocker only, not a safety. Nice, very nice. Like I say, if my hands were a little drier, I think I could do even better. But just for fun, while we're still staring at that spot, finish it up with some ball ammo, another magazine of 15. This is Remington UMC, upper middle class. Something to which we all aspire. Again, let's start out double action. Nice. Very nice shooting gun. I really, really am enjoying it. I'll show you lots of close-ups, talk about the specs, some of the, some of the minutia when we get back to the workbench where it is air conditioned <laughs> and I can uh, I can enjoy that a little better so when it comes to the Beretta 92 and custom work uh, there's really there's really only a couple names for me that come to mind and you see them both right here before you uh, Wilson combat on the right and Langdon tactical on the left okay so maybe the obvious question or at least to me is how do these two compare how do they stack up against each other? And I'm not going to turn this into a comparison video because that certainly could be a video all on its own. But you see it here next to the Brigadier Tactical from Wilson Combat. They are the same gun in terms of length. However, the Brigadier Tactical has a much thicker slide. And you can see that right there. So what I found, and it also has, the Brigadier Tactical also has a more traditional tritium night sight type setup. So what I think is more comparable is this one from Wilson Combat and this is the Centurion which has a slightly shorter barrel. If we put the two of them together like that you can see you can see it if I move it to where you can. Centurion is just a just a wee bit just a wee bit like a half inch shorter. But everything else is extremely comparable. Look at those sight pictures. Very close, right? The grip thickness, or lack thereof, is very close. Um, neither one of them have a lanyard ring, although Wilson Combat does give you this little wedge for your reloads. But So let me just run through real quickly what I consider to be the key differences between these two guns. And before I even start down that path, let me tell you that... <laughs> 
I wouldn't kick either of these guns out of the safe, and I wouldn't kick either of them out of my holster. They are both fantastic, and they both shoot like a joy. The triggers measure almost identical between the two. I put my gauge on both of them in the same, you know, the same day that Benj um, did one after the other, and you know, within within a couple of ounces here or there, they measure exactly the same. So call that same same. One thing I did notice on the Langdon Tactical, the decocker for the left-handed shooter is a milled part, nice solid steel milled part, well finished. On the Wilson Combat, also the ambidextrous decocker, but this is stamped, stamped metal. So not as nice a quality and doesn't look as nice. Um, so extra points there for Langdon Tactical. The grips on the Wilson Combat, again, they are both thin and they both, they both tout that in their spec sheets. They're both real proud of how thin they are and they should be. They're about 30 thousandths thinner on the Wilson Combat than they are on the Langdon Tactical. The Langdon Tactical has front slide serrations. The Wilson Combat does not. Neither of the two Wilson Combat models have that option. Talked about the shape of the trigger guard and that's really apparent here but also you can just see the thickness, thickness of the metal. The Centurion, and this even separates it from the Brigadier Tactical from Wilson Combat, but the Centurion comes with two 17 round and a 21 round magazine. So this guy, this guy's built to shoot. The Langdon comes with three 15 round magazines only. Fit and finish on both of these guns is fantastic. I can't see anything to my eye to distinguish one from the other or to set one apart from the other in terms of quality of fit and finish or materials other than, like I said, the ambidextrous decocker is a little on the cheap from Wilson Combat, but otherwise top-notch everything all the way around. So that's kind of my thoughts on the comparison. So those of you who would like to understand how they match up head to head, hope that helps. This is a loaner gun. It does have to go back to its rightful owner. So there won't be a head to head at the range with these two guns, but I don't think there really needs to be. Mm -hmm.